Welcome to our 2036 presidential election coverage. After the key first four primaries of the election season, we now move into Super Tuesday, where the most delegates are up and the most primaries are held. Wins in several of the key states up would help any respective candidate win their respective nominations. Now, let's get right into some polling. For the Democrats, Andy Beshear, former governor of Kentucky and uh, runner-up for the 2032 nomination, leads with 20%. Right behind him with 18% is Joe Kennedy III, governor of, Ma sorry, senator from Massachusetts. He was the 2032 running mate for Kamala Harris as well. Right behind him by just one point, Josh Stein, senator from North Carolina, and two points behind him at 15% is Governor of Massachusetts, Michelle Wu. We now move into the bottom two, Ruben Gallego, Governor of Arizona, who had a breakout win and an upset in Nevada, now at 10%. He's hoping to win some of the key states up, for example, Texas, and uh, make himself a more uh, credible contender for the Democratic nomination. Now we have former Speaker of the House, Akeem Jeffries. His polling numbers have collapsed. He was once in the top four and has failed to win a single primary so far, being beaten out in South Carolina, one of his best states. He's hoping to win in some of the southern states tonight in the Super Tuesday primaries. Now for the Republican primary, it is a very tight race. Mike Garcia and Glenn Youngkin are tied at 18%. Garcia, the current vice president under Ron DeSantis, and Youngkin, of course, the secretary of the treasury. Three points behind them is Maria Salazar, much like Ruben Gallego, she won in Nevada in an upset, which has placed her in the top three. And we also have Chris Sununu at 12%, rounding out the top four. Of course, he's a senator from New Hampshire and won that state, but otherwise hasn't been able to do well in any other states. He's polling well in the Northeast, but besides that, he has limited appeal. Now in the bottom two, we have George P. Bush, current attorney general. He had a, another upset win in South Carolina. He's pulling at 11%. And Sean Duffy, who's had stronger than expected performances, but still hasn't won a primary. He's at 10%, hoping to win some of the Rust Belt and Midwestern states in order to solidify his candidacy. And we now have our Super Tuesday poll closing out of this very large batch of states. In Alabama, we can project that Hakeem Jeffries will be the projected winner. This is his first state that he's won so far, and the campaign of Hakeem Jeffries, of course, hopes that he will win many more. We also project that in the Alabama primary, George P. Bush will be the projected winner. In the American Samoa primary, Michelle Wu is the projected winner. And in the Republican side, Mike Garcia will win this primary. And in Arkansas, this is a big win for Josh Stein. He's beating out Hakeem Jeffries in the state of Arkansas. Now in the Republican side, George Bush will win the state rather easily. And in California, a very big state, a very big win here for Michelle Wu. She will narrowly beat out Andy Beshear. This is a very big loss for the Beshear campaign, hoping to quickly win the nomination with its high polling numbers and wins in big states. However, Wu will win and with a very interesting coalition. As you can see, she's doing well in the Bay Area, a very liberal area, for example, the city of San Francisco. And also in Los Angeles, she will narrowly pull out a victory there. And in Orange County, and rather across the state, she's doing very well with the Asian vote, key in her victory with about a quarter of the vote. Very split as you can see. Now let's move on to the Republican side, an easy victory for Mike Garcia, this is his home state. To break down the numbers for you, he won in Los Angeles and on uh, areas like Monterey. Glenn Youngkin won in the Bay Area and in more suburban areas. Meanwhile, Chris Sununu won in the very most epitome of suburban areas. And of course, George P. Bush won in the traditional Republican counties, just below Fresno. Now in Colorado, we can project that Michelle Wu will be the projected winner. On the Republican side, Glenn Youngkin will win the state. And in Maine, this is an easy victory for Joe Kennedy with his Northeastern appeal. On the GOP side, another easy win here. Chris Sununu will win in this Northeastern state, his home territory. Now in Massachusetts, Joe Kennedy will beat out Michelle Wu. This is both of their home states, but it turns out that Massachusetts has more loyalty to Joe Kennedy than Michelle Wu. This makes sense since he is a more long-serving figure in their politics. Now in Massachusetts, Chris Sununu will win this state, another northeastern state falling into his column. And in Minnesota, a big win for Andy Beshear. He will win in his key state by a very large margin. 
doing well in nearly every area except for Kennedy taking out surprise numbers in the Iron Range and Michelle Wu doing well in the Twin Cities. Now on the Republican side, the first win for Sean Duffy, a very big win, similar to best year though by a lesser number. As you can see, he's doing very well. He's picked up all the rural areas and the Iron Range in contrast to Andy Bashir. George P. Bush taking out the exurbs of Minnesota, or sorry, the Twin Cities. Glenn Young can take in the suburbs. Mike Garcia taking, I believe, Minneapolis. And then uh, Maria Salazar taking St. Paul, if I'm saying that correctly. I might be wrong in that part, but the Twin City Metro is going to those two candidates, respectively. North Carolina, very easy victory for Josh Stein. This is his home state. No need for a county map here. Though on the Republican side, far closer. Glenn Young can winning and many of the uh, more suburban, moderate areas, as you can see across the state. Chris Sununu taking a very interesting victory in the more eastern, sorry, western rural areas. George P. Bush winning in the areas between that and Glenn Youngkin's territory, and Mike Garcia winning in the metro areas. Now in Oklahoma, very easy victory for Michelle Wu. This state is actually, interestingly, very progressive on the Democratic side, though in general elections, of course, state Republican. Now in Oklahoma, on the Republican side, George P. Bush, an easy victory, another southern state for him. This definitely seems to be where his appeal is at its best. Tennessee, an easy victory for Josh Stein. Andy Bashir was hoping to make this competitive. He is from neighboring Kentucky, but Stein is also from neighboring North Carolina, and his appeal is a lot more to these moderate Democrats in Tennessee. And on the Republican side, another very easy victory for George Bush. Not much competition from other candidates. And in Texas, a very big win for Bestiar, making up for his loss in California, he will win Texas by about 10 points. An endorsement by Senator Beto O'Rourke helped him in a lot of the areas here. As you can see, he's taken nearly every rural area except for some of the areas up north and west that are going to Josh Stein. He's also won in a few suburban areas, very key, showing that he has a lot of appeal to many different types of voters. Ruben Gallagher coming in second with a lot of the Hispanic vote in the metro areas and in the Rio Grande Valley. Of course, Michelle Wu doing well in the metros, and Joseph Kennedy actually not doing very well. He was hoping to win a lot of the suburban areas, but Bestiar beat him out by very narrow margins in several of them, especially in the Dallas Fort Worth suburbs. Now, an easy victory for George P. Bush, a little less than he would have hoped, but an easy victory in his home state of Texas, winning nearly every area except for a few. Uh, rural areas, interestingly enough, to Mike Garcia, and of course, the Rio Grande Valley. Garcia doing pretty well there, though Bush taking a narrow win due to Maria Salazar splitting much of the Hispanic vote against Garcia. Glenn Youngkin doing well in the suburbs and the Dallas-Fort Worth metro. And in Utah, another state that's interestingly very progressive on the Democratic side, Michelle Wu will win the state. And on the Republican side, Glenn Youngkin will win, doing very well with Mormons, very surprisingly. And in Vermont, a very easy victory for Michelle Wu. Potentially, Joseph Kennedy was going to win here due to it being a northeastern state, but the progressive vote left by Bernie Sanders has led this to be a Michelle Wu victory. And on the Republican side, a very not shocking victory by Chris Sununu. And in Virginia, a very close race. Bestiar losing by actually a decently large margin of 13 points to Josh Stein. Stein from Norbring, North Carolina, campaigned a lot in the state, and it has paid off with 36% of the vote and much of the state going to him. Bestiar only doing well in the more western rural areas, and Joseph Kennedy taking all the other counties, mainly in the uh, uh, Nova area, Washington DC suburbs, and kind of the Virginia Beach area as you can see, though not entirely. Josh Stein, very good appeal here, great campaign in the state. Meanwhile, we don't even need a county map for this, Glenn Youngkin would easily win his home state by a very, very large margin. And in Democrats abroad, Andy Bashir will win this group of Democrats not currently based in the country. A good win for him. And here is a current primary map. Michelle Wu has jumped into second place, but by a decently large margin, Andy Bashir is up by about 50 delegates. As you can see, Josh Stein taking third, Kennedy fourth, and Ruben Gallego fifth. Hakeem Jeffries only in sixth place with one state. Definitely candidate that thought they would do better. I mean, he was Speaker of the House after all, but Josh Stein took a lot of his vote in the more southern states. As you can see, maybe something like George P. Bush on the Republican side can pair this to. Jeffries hoped to be like him, taking nearly every southern state. However, he was not, given that Josh Stein is actually a more appropriate candidate. Hakeem Jeffries more controversial due to him being in such a high-profile position. 
Now enough talk, let's move over to the GOP side. Mike Garcia remains in first place, or sorry, is in first place. George P. Bush taking second. It's a very narrow 13th uh, delegate gap. And Glenn Youngkin is in third place. Um, it appears that Chris Nunu in fourth, Salazar in fifth, and Duffy in sixth. This is interesting, Duffy won his first state. Salazar didn't win any, but had good performances all around. And Akeem Jeffries has announced that he has left the presidential race. This is after a very disciplined performance, as we have talked about earlier. He has not endorsed anyone, however. And we now look at the polling Democratic primary. Michelle Wu now tied with Andy Bechiar, not a good showing for Bechiar, who hoped to win this Democratic nomination rather easily. Josh Stein moving into third place, taking out Kennedy, who after a very uh, lackluster performance in Super Tuesday, is now in fourth place. Meanwhile, only Ann, uh, Ruben Gallego is left here in the bottom, but well, was the bottom two, now just the bottom one, at 14%, only two points behind Kennedy. Now for the Republicans, it is currently at Mike Garcia, 19%, one point behind him, and tied actually for second with Glenn Youngkin, George P. Bush at 18, Maria Salazar at 15. Now we have Chris Sununu, he's now in uh, fifth place at 12, and now uh, George, sorry, not George P. Bush, as Sean Duffy in still in sixth place, George P. Bush moving up as you saw earlier to second place. And now we have our what is called the mini Super Tuesday primaries, a decent amount of states up here and several big ones. Now let's get right into it. Andy Bashira will win the Idaho primary, easy victory here for him. And the other side, George P. Bush, it's not a state he's expected to win, however, with his momentum, he's able to carry it rather easily. In the state of Michigan, a massive victory for Andy Bashir, taking over 50% of the vote and much of the state. Michelle Wu, Michelle Wu doing very well in the metro areas, Kennedy in the moderate areas, and Josh Stein really being kicked out by Andy Bashir, many moderate Democrats picking the former Kentucky governor over the senator from North Carolina. Meanwhile, on the Republican side, a very big uh, victory for Duffy, taking much of the state in a coalition similar to Andy Bashir. Now for Mississippi, Josh Stein, an easy victory. And on the Republican side, another easy victory here. No surprise, George P. Bush taking the state. And in Missouri, we have another very large victory for Andy Bashir, sweeping almost all of the state and winning a crucial county in St. Louis, taking that city very well. Josh Stein in second place. And on the Republican side, very similar here, Sean Duffy taking the victory over George P. Bush. And in North Dakota, a very, very not surprising victory in North Dakota for Andy Bashir. Not many surprises up here tonight, just big victories. And now on the Republican side, Sean Duffy will win the state. Good win, win for him. And in Washington, Michelle Wu will take this state. This was once thought to be going to potentially Andy Bashir, but Wu will do very well with the more liberal voters here. And now on the Republican side, Mike Garcia will win. A good victory for him. He campaigned a lot in the state. It was expected to go to Glenn Youngkin, but an upset here by Garcia. And now on the primary map, uh, Andy Bechtiar just under 500 delegates, and about 100 behind him is Michelle Wu. He's expanded his lead by double. Now as you can see, let's look at the map. Josh Stein still in third, Kennedy still in fourth, and Ruben Gallego in fifth. Jeffries, of course, has dropped out. The map is showing up to be pretty much based on regional appeal. As you can see, uh, Andy Bashir doing well in the Midwest and Rust Belt, with the exception of Texas. Michelle Wu actually all over the place, winning a smattering of northeastern states and more progressive areas across the country. And then Stein, of course, winning the South, and Kennedy, a few areas in the Northeast. And on the Republican side, George P. Bush has taken the lead over Mike Garcia. Glenn Youngkin still in third place, moving then into Chris Nunu, Maria Salazar, and then Sean Duffy. This race is likely even more um, based on regional appeal than the other one. Garcia taking the West Coast, Salazar winning Nevada, very Hispanic state. Uh, of course, Chris Nunu taking the Northeast, Sean Duffy the Midwest, and of course, Bush the South. And here's our current polling map with current frontrunners. Andy Bashir would win narrowly and against George P. Bush, doing very well um, pretty much all around. He would win Kansas, which is a very contested state, and even Pennsylvania, likely doing better there in the area of Pittsburgh, which might potentially vote more for other candidates like, for example, Sean Duffy. Now let's move on to the next polling matchup with Matthew McConaughey, the 
Speaker and talked about a t potential independent candidate. This would send it to the House by Sheer not being able to win a majority but taking a strong first and McConaughey would actually almost take second place. We won a very many key states in the Northeast and a few in the Midwest as well. And also, interestingly enough, the state of Texas. And now he's playing map between George P. Bush and Josh Stein. Stein would actually win by more than Bashir, winning the state of North Carolina, his home state, and Montana. Okay then, thank you all for watching. Sorry for the very, very long delay, but I wanted to get this out as soon as possible, as soon as my computer was fixed and my mic was returned. The whole thing, the whole election night is finished, so I'll be trying to whip these out as fast as possible. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this, leave a like and tell me what you thought about this video in the comments. If you want to see more types of this video, subscribe for more and check out my channel for the rest of the series. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.